So now in this video, we are going to be looking at the pin layout of transistors. So this is mostly intended for if you're not sure of the pin layout. And so these are both bipolar junction transistors. This is an NPN type bipolar junction transistor. That's a PNP type bipolar junction transistor. And so this is the 2N3904 and the 2N3906. They're complementary. They have basically the same properties, but their chemistry are opposite. So in any case, right now this is wired as a switch that is on. We have a 2200 ohm resistor limiting the current of the LED and uh, there you can see 2.2 kilo ohms 2200 ohms and it depends on this resistor passing current to the base and then down to the emitter this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor so a lot lower value resistor a small current controlling a large current normally you'd see a mechanical switch instead of yanking and plugging in the uh, resistor you would have the resistor and maybe the switch is not being pressed, the LED's off, you press the switch, then it conducts and the LED turns on. But in any case, it's a basic NPN bipolar junction transistor switch. So the pin layout is important, and it may not seem important at first. So now, we're going to do one of the first tests you learn when it comes to bipolar junction transistors, at least that you've, you've read about. And so, we are going to take off the components of uh, the pins there. Now we have this one, it's connected to the rail, but nothing comes back to the transistor. So if we put a probe there, it doesn't see anything over there, just the two points that we put the uh, probe. And I'm gonna set this meter, there's a continuity setting and a diode testing setting. Those are usually commonly together. So right now it's the continuity testing. And so if there's no resistance, then it beeps. If there's a ton of resistance between the two, then there's no beep, you know. So that's what that does. We're going to hit the select button. Now we have a diode tester. And so diodes are P and N type material next to each other. And then each side has a terminal. And if you put voltage across in the right direction, it conducts easily in one direction, but not the other. So this is N, P, N. So it's kind of like two diodes back to back. P type in the middle, N type on one side, and then P type in the middle, N type on the other side. And we can test that like a diode right there. So you can see we got a diode there. And when I get a connection, we have a diode there. It's a silicon diode. It's blocking about 0.7 volts, but after that it conducts really easily. So it's forward biased. And so if we try to measure this way, we will not get a diode reading because we got p-type material there, p-type material here with n-type in the middle, and it's not set to conduct unless you got a signal coming from base. So you can easily tell that uh, neither one of these is the base by by doing that. And if you have the negative to the base, that blocks conduction. So we have negative to the p-type material positive to the end type material that is a diode that is set to not conduct so finding the base is really easy and so now you learn that I'm not going to go over that anymore now we know there's a diode there and a diode there so this is N P N that is pretty clear but which one is the collector and the emitter that is tougher you should look up the data sheet also since this is a 2N transistor, this is a 2N3904. When you look at the flat side, if it starts with 2N, if it has any other numbers or letters before the 2N, it may have a different pin layout. But I find every one that starts with 2N, that's a bipolar junction transistor, whether it's NPN or PNP has the pin layout emitter base collector. And uh, you should always verify with the data sheet. But uh, in any case, we are going to, uh, we don't need the meter anymore. We can use the power supply to figure out which one is the emitter and which one is the collector. And so, we come back to the power supply, by the way. This is an LED, so it's a diode. We could have uh, tested that with the with the meter. We would have saw that it has about 1.8, I think, volts. But in any case, we have the long lead, the anode to the resistor there, short lead, the cathode, is coming 
to the collector of the transistor here. The power supply voltage is off. If I hit the power button for this particular one, that sets the output on right there. And so again, the uh, circuit is off until we give a signal right here. And so that is a working switch right there without a signal. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Now let's put the transistor in backwards. So we're going to put the emitter up here, collector down there. And again, it is working like a switch. So, so far, not very helpful, but that's because we are dealing with 9 volts right there. Let's uh, turn this around and put the 10 kilo ohm resistor uh, back there. You can see the LED is on. Let's uh, yank this out. And so looking at the data sheet, we should have, uh, I believe it is 40 volts that we can raise that to and it will not conduct. So let's go over here, let's go to uh, basically 20 volts, and my unit here only goes to 30 volts. But there you can see it is off, and I'm going to drop this back down to 20 volts right now. And I'm going to pop the transistor out and put it in backwards. So now the emitter is connected to the load, and there you can see the LED is on, and we're passing about uh, 3 milliamps of current. Again, this resistor is a 2200 ohm resistor right there. So this should not be on right now. And so the emitter to base uh, diode is weaker than the collector to base diode. Well reverse bias. It starts conducting well reverse bias. And then ultimately that's kind of like having a positive signal at the base and then it's conducting as you can see here. Now we can turn it off with a negative signal. If I go to the negative rail, actually I thought that would turn it off. Let's try. That's why you do these tests. That's how you learn. Let's try lowering the voltage until it goes off. There we go. And plucking it. Oh, okay. So yeah, if we give it a positive signal though, it will turn on. I thought if we gave it a negative, it would hold it off, but looks like I am wrong. So, in any case, now we put it back in the uh, proper way. Of course, a negative signal will hold it off even better, or at least as good there. And we need a positive signal to turn it on. So, that's the main test. It looks like if it's backwards, even at 11 volts, it's off pretty good, this 2N3904. I don't think the 2N2222 did as good, but uh, I was testing that one before this one. But it's harder to find their data sheet, so I think I'm going to use the 2N3904 more often now. But in any case, you can see we can just start with the low voltage when, when it's off. We're not sure if it's in the right way or not, and just raise the voltage. Nothing is at the base. The base is floating. That LED should not be on. So we know it's backwards and we can turn it around. So we know that's the collector, that's the base, and that is the emitter. And now we come to the PNP transistor. This is a 2N3906. It starts with 2N and I know the pin layout is the same. Emitter to the left, middle pin is the base, and the collector is to the right when you're looking at the flat side. And so let's put it in the board the same way this, this time because we're just going to kind of pretend like I don't know the pin layout right here. So we have the middle pin to that jumper. We can verify that that middle pin is the base by doing the uh, diode testing. So right now we'll kind of assume we don't know which pin is the base. So there's continuity again. This just picks up whether you have a zero resistance path or a high resistance path right there so we want to hit the button until we see the uh, diode symbol if uh, they're both at the same setting and also I will uh, I mentioned the uh, LED before we can measure uh, any diode really and if it doesn't block uh, way too much voltage you can get a reading there so that's forward biased and uh, so you know the p-type material the anode is where the red probe is the n-type material the cathode is where the black probe is right now and 
So we'll do the same test with this. So of course, this is a PNP transistor, I know that. So if we put the black probe in the middle, because we know that's the base, and then the red probe there, we have a diode right there. So it's the same as the NPN, but it's opposite polarities. So we know there's N type there. If we come here and we touch these two, we will get nothing because that's not N type material, that's P type material. Same with if we put the black probe over here. So it's really easy with the diode tester. Process of elimination if it's a PNP type transistor or an NPN type transistor to find the base. Lons, it's a bipolar junction transistor. Really straightforward there. So, what we're going to do is the PNP transistor switch. We don't need the uh, multimeter anymore. It's just like the NPN bipolar junction switch, except polarities are opposite. So, this time we're going to put, we're going to keep the uh, positive towards the top of the breadboard though and negative towards the bottom. I could put this jumper. Uh, right there, but I'm going to put it up there. And uh, so we got it to that top pin there. And just a warning right now, I'm wiring it backwards. So I know that. And we got the 10 kilo ohm uh, resistor. We'll do that later. So that's 10,000 ohms. That just gives a really small signal to the base to get it to start conducting. The 2200 ohm resistor protects the LED and the transistor and the resistor because this is a little more than an eighth of a watt if I put the power supply to 20 volts and so that's why I'm not using a higher voltage when you see the LED lit up when you see current flowing so right there we got that and the LED we'll put right there and it's already glowing you can tell we have this backwards so we'll zoom back because I have 12 volts there let's let's lower this right now there you can see we don't see anything at about 10 volts. Let's zoom in and we can put the resistor to the negative rail now. Remember, polarities are opposite. Now, one thing is this is a PNP switch right now. On, off. Working as it should right now at a low voltage even though it is backwards. We just figured that out but we're going to pretend like we don't know that yet. So, in any case, one nice thing about PNP switches is they're on the more positive side of the circuit. It's a little odd though that you have to give it a low signal to turn it on, but uh, in any case it's up here and then we can work our circuitry towards the negative because usually a mechanical switch is more positive than the load. But in any case that's uh, topics for other videos. Now we have it conducting. We can remove the uh, resistor and uh, zoom back to look at the voltage and we already saw Okay, I accidentally went to 20, but there we go. So this resistor is going to get quite hot, but probably still pretty safe. It's less than a quarter of a watt. So we have that, and we could see the exact voltage that it would start lighting up. It'd be a better idea to work your way up. But I think this one, I didn't look at the data sheet for this one, but since the 2N3904 took 40 volts to uh, get it to start conducting from collector to emitter, this would be negative. 40 if it is indeed 40 but I'm just going to assume it's probably going to take about 40 volts for negative 40 in this case for it to conduct and it's conducting now at 11 because no signal is at the base so we will just turn it around and there we go it is off like it's supposed to be for a switch there's no signal to the base and it is off and now again we shouldn't probably not exceed 20 volts but uh Go to the negative, negative rail there with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we have, if you want to look at electron flow now, that's kind of an easier way to look. So negative voltages, it's kind of easier to think of electron flow. We have a little bit of electron flow from the uh, base to emitter there because the electrons go negative to positive. Usually we talk about conventional current going positive and negative. But we have a uh, small amount of electrons and however many electrons go from base to emitter they'll allow a multiple amount of electrons to go from collector to emitter and uh, that's what we're seeing here so we have plenty here to allow the transistor to fully conduct whatever electrons the LED and resistor will let through and so right now the transistor is fully on saturated switch so in any case 
Hopefully that all made sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.